If you just picked up a Canon R50, you've come to the right spot. In this video, I'm gonna go over the best settings for the Canon EOS R50. So let's jump right in. What's up, it's Danny Falcotti and welcome to the video. Now the first thing I recommend doing when you get any new camera is to write down the serial number. The serial number on the Canon R50 is actually located on the bottom. You can write that down in a notes app or register it on the Canon website. You're never gonna know when you need your serial number, for example, for repairs or if your camera gets stolen. So the first thing I recommend doing is charging the included battery. And now once that's charged, we can pop it in our camera here. And I should also note that in the battery slot below, there is also an SD card slot. So let's put it our battery here and you're also going to want at least a UHS one memory card um, I'll include a list of recommended memory cards in the description of this video and the last thing you're going to want to do is update the firmware this is a really simple process you basically just drag a file onto your SD card and then uh, put in your camera and you can update it through there now that we covered the basics we can go over photography settings I'm actually going to split this video up into two sections photography settings and video settings so if you're only looking for video settings you can just hop over to that section of the video but first let's dive into photography settings. Now before we get started, you're going to want to turn your camera off of automatic. That's the little green setting. You're going to want to use P, TV, AV, or M. That's uh, manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, and program. Now when you put it in this mode, it'll actually give you the full menu of your camera and not a boiled down one for beginners. Obviously, if you're a beginner, the uh, default automatic settings will simplify the menu and that's pretty good for most people, but we're going to dive into the more advanced settings of the camera. So after putting your camera on one of those modes, we can dive into the settings. Now we're just going to hit the menu button here and that's going to bring up the menu and we're going to go through the order of the menus. So you can see right now we're on the first shooting menu, number one. And the first thing most people are going to recommend that you change, including me, is changing your settings to shoot RAW. By default, the camera will be shooting JPEG, but you're definitely going to want to switch that to RAW. So you're going to want to turn off JPEG and you're going to want to turn on RAW. Now I can make a whole video about why you should shoot RAW. Basically, it gives you more ability to edit your photos afterwards. If you don't plan on editing your photos, I probably would recommend uh, leaving it on JPEG. Now we can go to shooting menu number two and what we're gonna change here is the ISO speed settings and max for auto. Now the ISO is basically the sensitivity of your sensor during photos for low light. Uh, by default, it only goes to 6400, but we can actually increase this to 12,800. I think the amount of noise that you get on this camera isn't that bad, so we're gonna switch it to 1200. Basically, we're gonna uh, sacrifice more grain for hopefully a better, sharper image because we don't have to use as long shutter speeds. And since we're shooting raw, we're also gonna turn off the auto lighting optimizer. Basically, this setting is really good for JPEG, but if you're shooting raw, all it's gonna do is modify your preview images and not your actual raw images. So it could just end up deceiving you of what your app final image is gonna look like. So now we're gonna head over to shooting menu number five, and we're gonna go to high ISO speed noise reduction and put it to low. The standard is pretty good, but I'd rather have it on a lower setting. So then when we're editing our photos in post, we can add more noise canceling if we actually want to later. Now in shooting menu number six, there's an option called release shutter without card. Basically what this does is it lets you take pictures without a card in the camera. I find that this might actually just end up confusing you because you're gonna think that you have a card in the camera, especially if you just take one quick shot and then you're just gonna be annoyed. So there's no benefit of having that on. All it's gonna do is gonna to make it so you end up forgetting your memory card. Now on the shooting menu number seven, there's an option called customize quick controls. And this option actually lets you edit the layout of your quick controls. Now what that is, is when you hit the Q button while you're shooting uh, in live mode, especially, you're gonna get a bunch of options there and this actually controls those options. So if you're a more experienced shooter, you're probably gonna know the settings that you want on this page. But by default, I think the settings they offer are pretty good. But you can see here, you can uh, turn off options and then add new ones here. On shooting menu number seven, you'll also see image review. And here you can change the review duration. So basically after you shoot a photo, it'll show the photo for an amount of seconds. Here you can turn it off or have it so it just stays up. Um, if you're a more of a beginner, maybe you want to see your photos longer and maybe if you're more of a pro, you don't even want to review your photos and you just want to keep shooting so you can turn it off there. Um, I keep it on the two second mark. And then shooting menu number eight, you can see here we have shooting info display 
And on this screen, we can actually change what menus show up while we're shooting. So when you're shooting and you hit info, it'll cycle through a couple menus. Um, by default, there's a lot of menus to cycle through. And uh, using this setting, we can basically eliminate a few of those. So it's just a lot easier to use the camera. Personally, I like to turn off number one and turn off number five, because basically this will give you kind of a useful uh, setup here, kind of a more uh, aggressive setup with lots of options, and then a more minimal setup. So you can just quickly cycle through those. Also in this menu, you'll see you have the option to add a grid display. So we can uh, turn on a grid that shows up while you're shooting. For example, you could turn on a three by three grid and that'll actually help you a lot with the rule of thirds while you're shooting. Also in the histogram display, you're gonna wanna change this from brightness to RGB. Basically, this just makes it so the histogram will show red, green, and blue instead of just a general brightness one, giving you more information while you're shooting. I also find the display of the histogram by default very large and overwhelming, so we're gonna change the display size to small. Now let's go over to the autofocus menu here, and the first setting we're gonna look at is the AF operation. Now this is the first time I've ever seen this on a Canon camera, and I thought it was really interesting. Normally, when you're operating your camera, you can only do one shot or servo. Basically that means when you hit the button halfway down in your camera, it'll stay locked on in the one shot mode. So for example, if I look at a subject, hold my finger down on the button halfway and then move, the focus plane will stay static. So, um, you know, that's great if you're trying to achieve a specific effect while servo on the other hand will grab onto the subject and keep that focus really great for portraits. And on the R50, this is the first time I've ever seen this setting on a, on a Canon camera. Basically it's called AI focus. And the way I've seen it work for my testing is it basically functions like one shot. And then after a subject starts moving, it'll move to servo. So if you're like shooting a landscape, it'll stay on one shot, which is great for landscape shots or cityscapes. And then if you're shooting a moving subject, like a person or a pet, it'll actually switch over to servo. So I think for beginners, I would definitely change that to AI focus. Also on the first autofocus menu is a very important setting subject to detect. Basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna let you pick what type of subject that you're actually tracking for. Uh, by default, it's on people, but you can turn it on auto, vehicles, animals. Um, I find it best to actually change it for the mode you're trying to shoot on. So if you're trying to shoot like a photo of your dog, you're gonna to wanna to change it to animals. And if you're trying to shoot people, you're gonna to wanna to change it to people, of course. Also in the autofocus menu number two, you'll see AF assist beam firing. Now what this does is it shines a little light while you're shooting on low light, so it illuminates the scene a little more, so your camera can have help while it's trying to autofocus. I find this annoying in most cases, so I just recommend turning this off. And in the autofocus menu number three, you'll see touch and drag AF settings and we're gonna turn that on. Now basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it so the touch screen acts as a joystick. As you may know, the R50 does not have a joystick on the back, so it can make it kind of hard to move uh, your focus point. Basically, with this setting on, when your eye is in the viewfinder, you can actually drag your finger around the screen while your eye is on the viewfinder, and it'll actually move that focus point for you and act like a joystick. I would also recommend turning on the manual focus peaking setting just to on. Basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna highlight parts of your photo when you're focused on them, when you're using manual focus. So once you switch to manual focus, uh, the thing that's in focus will actually have a little red outline on it, making it really easy to tell what you have in focus. Now we're gonna go over to the playback menu number four. So that's over in the little play button here. And you can see we have playback information display. So when you're reviewing your photos on the camera, there's actually a few menus you cycle through when you hit info. And by default, it's a lot of menus. You can see here it's over nine, which is kind of overwhelming in my opinion. And you can see there's a lot of important information, but most people are not gonna need this. Um, so I recommend turning off the ones that aren't relevant to you. Um, I typically just turn on one through three, so it's really easy to cycle through because a lot of this information can be overwhelming. Next, I'm gonna go over to the wireless menu. You can see here, it's the little curved shape. And we're gonna go to wireless menu number two, and you can see airplane mode, and we're gonna turn that on. Basically, if you're not using the Wi-Fi functions on your camera, I just recommend turning the airplane mode on to save battery, especially because the batteries on these cameras are really small. Now, of course, if you were trying to transfer photos using Wi-Fi, you're gonna wanna turn this back off. That way your phone can connect to the camera. Next, in setup menu number one, uh, you'll see format card. This is just a really important option to know where it is in the camera menus. Every time that I dump my photos off on my computer, I put the memory card back on my camera and format the card. I basically use this function every time I go shooting. So I highly recommend uh, getting that down in your workflow so you always have a clean card to work off of. But keep in mind that formatting the card means that it's gonna erase everything. So just keep that in mind. Next on the setup menu number one, you can see we have 
auto rotate and we're gonna just turn that to on computer. Basically what this does is when you're looking at photos in the back of your camera, uh, by default when you twist the camera into portrait orientation, it'll uh, twist the photo with it, which can be kind of disorienting depending on what photo you're looking at because if you're looking at a portrait photo and you're looking at it in a landscape, it'll like move back and forth and things like that. It can just be kind of um, disorienting. So I recommend just turning this to on computer so the photos are properly rotated on the computer for you. Next we're gonna go to setup menu number two and you can see mode guide. Now, now what mode guide does is when you switch the modes on this camera, for example, if you go from automatic, as you can see here, it's popping up the mode guide. Now this is uh, obviously really helpful for beginners, but if you know your stuff and know what all these settings mean, this can be really annoying to pop up on you. So we're gonna turn that off in that menu. So let's disable mode guide there. Now if you're really experienced with cameras like I am, uh, you're gonna wanna turn off the feature guide also. Basically that shows a little help description on each quick control items. You can see on the top there, that that's the example of the feature guide. And also in setup menu number two, beep. Now every time that the camera focuses, there's a little beep, which can get really annoying over time. So I definitely recommend turning that off. And the last thing for the photo settings is we're gonna go to setup menu number five. And you can see in here, we have an option for copyright information. Now here you can put in your name that will be written to the metadata every time you use the camera. So you can put your name in, and then when you export photos or share photos, that'll actually be written in the metadata. Now that we've been over the photography settings, we can dive into the video settings and there is no dedicated video slash photo mode on this camera. So we actually have to switch over to the video dial here on the mode dial on the top. So we're gonna switch over to video. Now the important thing is, is if you're used to other Canon cameras, there's typically a dedicated uh, video slash photo mode button and that lets you pick the mode using the same dial you're used to. With this camera, you have to actually pick the mode with the menu. You, so you can see here, we have shooting mode. So basically this is gonna control all of your shooting modes. Um, if you're not a very experienced with video, I would definitely keep it on an automatic setting. They have a bunch of helpful automatic settings here. But of course, if you're more experienced, you're gonna wanna turn on that movie manual exposure. Next, I recommend switching the camera to 4K, which is right under that setting we just talked about. And you can see movie recording size here. Uh, 4K on this camera looks so great. So you're kinda doing a disservice if you're just using 1080p in my opinion. So I definitely recommend switching it to 4K. Um, it depends what frame rate you're shooting. If you're not very familiar with frame rates, um, you can just pick the uh, 29.97, but this obviously will depend on your preference. Also, if you plan on using a microphone with this camera, you're gonna to wanna to go to sound recording on that menu, and you're gonna to wanna to turn that off of auto onto manual. So if you're using a microphone with this camera, you're gonna to wanna to configure this. Uh, this will depend on what microphone you're using. Typically, depending on the microphone, you're gonna to wanna to knock this like up one or two notches from the from the lowest level, as you can see I'm doing here. Of course, this is if you're using a microphone with the camera. By default, the auto mode basically will increase the levels. So if you're using a microphone and you stop talking, and the microphone is quiet, the camera will take that as a hint to increase recording levels and it'll end up actually adding like a hiss or a lot of noise to your microphone and it'll make your microphone overall sound not great. So you'll kind of think that there's an issue with the microphone when actually you just need to set this to manual recording. Also in shooting menu number two in video mode, we're gonna go to ISO speed settings and we're gonna change max for auto time-lapse to 400. Now what this is gonna do is when you're shooting a built-in time-lapse with this camera, it'll only make the ISO go up to 400. By default, it does 6400, and if you're shooting at night, that'll make a grainy time-lapse. I kinda of find it odd that they default to that setting because you're typically gonna use a tripod while you're shooting the time-lapse and you're gonna want a low ISO. So then the resulting image has little grain, so that's a great way to make the time-lapse mode a lot more powerful on this camera. Also, since there is no in-body image stabilization on this camera, on shooting menu number five, you'll see IS mode and on here you can turn on a digital stabilization so basically what this will do is it'll crop your image slightly and keep it more stabilized and then the enhanced mode will do it even more of course this will depend on what you're shooting if you're out and about and you don't want to edit your videos and stabilize them afterwards if you're kind of doing more action based things maybe enhanced um, if you're shooting using a tripod and you're just talking to the camera like I am right now you're probably gonna to want to turn that to off also in shooting menu number five you'll see zebra settings now I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna use zebra pattern number two and I'm gonna put zebra pattern number two to 90%. Basically what this will do is it'll make it a lot easier to see which parts of your image are overexposed. And that's it, we've been over the best settings for the Canon R50. Now this is such a little powerful camera. Uh, the only thing that I dislike about it, honestly, is the grip is too small for my hand. Just something to consider if you're still in the buying phase. Of course, all of these settings are up to your preference. If you don't like something that I said, 
change it to what you want. That's the beauty of all of these settings. I kind of wanted to show you all the things that you can change and what I would change as an experienced cannon shooter. But of course, if you're a beginner or a pro, it's gonna depend on what you're gonna change. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to B&H Photo. I actually buy all my camera gear from them and they actually loaned me this camera to make this video. So thank you B&H. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.